To observe and predict the weather, we use weather instruments. This lesson, you will learn about some of the instruments that are used in order to gather information about the current weather and to predict the future weather. The first instrument that we talk about is one that you are familiar with, and that's simply a thermometer. Thermometer is a instrument that we use to measure the temperature in the atmosphere. Uh, in the United States, we use Fahrenheit. If you go to other places in the world, you will see that they uh, release their temperature information in Celsius. But in here, in the United States, we use Fahrenheit. The next piece of equipment that is used, that we might use, is a barometer. We've already talked about a barometer in a previous lesson, but a barometer measures the air pressure. And remember that when we have low air pressure, we are generally looking at cloudy skies, sometimes rain or other type of precipitation. And the higher the pressure, means the more dense the air is, the less uh, water vapor it will hold. So we're looking with high pressure at generally cooler temperatures and fair skies. The next instrument is actually two different instruments. Uh, one is an anemometer. That's the instrument at the top here. An anemometer is used to measure the speed of the wind. And then right underneath that, we have what is known as a wind vane. A wind vane shows wind direction. Now, when we talk about wind direction, we say the direction that the wind is coming from. In other words, if we have a west wind, that means the wind is coming to us from the west. If we have a north wind, the wind is blowing from the north towards the weather station. This instrument is a rain gauge, and a rain gauge simply measures the amount of precipitation. The, the rain gauge is set in a, an area where water from the sky falls into it. In other words, it has to be in an open area where it's not blocked by any buildings, trees, or any obstacles to stop the, the rain from falling, and it basically simply collects the amount of water that falls in a, in a given area, and we can then measure that and see how much water fell over a given time, and that will tell us how much precipitation or rain has fallen. And the last instrument we're going to look at is called a sling psychrometer. A sling psychrometer is an instrument right here. It actually has two thermometers on it. And what we do is we, we wrap one bulb of the thermometer with a wet uh, gauze. And the other, that is called the wet bulb. And the other thermometer is left without anything. That's the dry bulb. You then take the psychrometer, hold it by the handle here, and literally sling it round and round and round. What happens is, is the, the wet bulb, this moisture from the wet bulb, evaporates into the air. As it evaporates, evaporation causes cooling. And so, after you sling this for a minute or so, you stop the wet bulb temperature is going to then probably be lower than the dry bulb temperature. And what we do is we take the difference in the wet bulb and dry bulb temperature, go over here to a chart, and with that chart we can find the difference in wet and dry bulb. And from that, and then we, we look at the uh, dry bulb temperature, and from that we can determine the relative humidity how much moisture is in the atmosphere at a given temperature. 
when we have that information, we can then go to uh, another chart and we can look at the relative humidity and the temperature and we can determine the dew point. And the dew point is the temperature at which water in the atmosphere, water vapor, begins to condense or change from a, li from a uh, gas to a liquid. Con condensation. Uh, so these are very important tools for all of these tools are very important tools in determining weather and predicting future weather.